In this video, we're going to learn what we mean by the terms integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, squares, cubes and roots, factors, multiples and prime numbers. Each of these types of number is contained in a set which we call the real numbers. The real numbers are the numbers that you're most used to working with. And they include rational numbers, irrational numbers, integers, negatives, and so on. In fact, if we look at this Venn diagram, we see that rational numbers and irrational numbers are contained in the set of real numbers, but there is no overlap. A number will either be rational or irrational. But then the integers sit within the set of rational numbers. So integers are a type of rational number. In fact, an integer is a whole number and we include negative whole numbers and zeros in the set of integers. We say that a rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction where both the numerator and denominator of that fraction are integers. So a over b where a and b are whole numbers. All terminating and recurring decimals are examples of these. For instance, two sevenths is a rational number because it's made up of two and seven, both of which are whole numbers. Similarly, 0 0.5 can be written as one half. Then once we have the definition of a rational number, an irrational number is a number that's not rational. And we have some common examples. Pi is an irrational number, as is the square root of two. And in fact, that leads us on to calculating with powers and roots. During this video, we're mostly interested in squares cubes and their roots, but we can recall that a power tells us to multiply a number by itself a certain amount of times. For example, 2 to the power of 4 or 2 to the 4th power is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which we can evaluate to be equal to 16. When the power, which we sometimes call an index or exponent, is 2, the number we get is called a square number. And when the power is 3, the result we get is a cube number. Now it's important not only that you can calculate these, but you do need to be able to recognize and quickly recall the square numbers up to the result of 10 squared, and the cube numbers up to the result of five cubed plus the result of 10 cubed. Why don't you pause the video now and see how many of these square and cube numbers you can list. Give yourself a minute or two to do this. Did you get them all? The squares and cubes that you need to be able to easily recall are listed here. Now, the reason that it's useful to be able to recognise and quickly recall these is because you also need to be able to find the roots, and a root essentially reverses the power. The mathematical word for this is the inverse. So, for example, the square root of 9 written as shown is 3, since 3 squared is equal to 9. Similarly, the cube root of 64 is 4, since 4 cubed is equal to 64. Now using this concept, can you work out the fourth root of 16? Pause the video now, look at what we've done so far, and give it a go. The fourth root of 16 is 2, since 2 to the fourth power is 16, as we saw a little bit earlier. In order to develop some fluency in these skills, I'd like you to pause the video in a moment and have a go at the Introduction to Powers and Roots Mastery Worksheet shown. When you're done, mark your work and come back for the next part of the video. Welcome back. We're now going to look at the final three definitions. And these are factors, multiples, and prime numbers. Let's begin with factors. We say that a factor is a number that divides exactly into another without leaving a remainder. And we can list factors of a number in pairs. Take, for example, the factor pairs of 20. We know that 1 times 20 is 20. Similarly, 2 times 10 is 20. And 4 times 5 is 20. So all the factors of 20 are 1, 20, 2, 10, 4 and 5. Can you write down all the factors of 16? Pause the video now and give it a go. The factor pairs of 16 are 1 and 16, and 2 and 8, 
And finally, the last one is 4, since 4 squared is 16. Notice that since 16 is a square number, we actually have an odd amount of factors. The same can be said for any square number, in fact. And what about multiples? Well, a multiple is the product of a number and another integer. Remember, product means times. Essentially, it's any number in that number's times table. For example, let's take the number 3. The first five multiples of 3 are the first five numbers in the 3 times table. That's 3, 6, 9, 12, and finally 15. Now, of course, there will be an infinite number of multiples of 3, whilst factors have a very definite amount. Now pause the video and list the first five multiples of 7. Hopefully you spotted there the first five numbers in the 7 times tables. That's 7, 14, 21, 28, and finally 35. And finally we come to the definition of a prime number. These are a really special type of number. They are numbers, in fact whole numbers, which have exactly two factors, one and itself. And note that a prime number by definition will always be a positive integer. The first few prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, 7, 11 and 13. Now can you spot why 1 is not a prime number? Pause the video now and think on that for just a moment. Did you spot it? 1 is not a prime number since it only has one factor and that number is itself. A prime number must have exactly two factors. And these definitions can lead us into a whole bunch of different areas in maths. For now though, you need to practice recognising them. So navigate your way over to this colour by numbers. You have two options. The gold sheet is there for anyone who thinks they would be confident in finding irrational numbers as well as primes, multiple factors, squares and cubes. But if you don't feel as confident at identifying irrational numbers at this point, you can stick with the silver activity sheet. Pause the video now and we'll see you back here soon. Welcome back. Hopefully a little bit of colouring was just what you needed to consolidate this lesson. We've seen what we mean by the terms integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and we've learned how to recognise squares, cubes and roots. We also saw what we meant by a factor and a multiple, and we looked at how to identify whether a number is prime. Thank you for joining us and hopefully we'll see you back here soon.